So this is an old AP Calc AB question from way back in the year 2000, uh, but it only involves implicit differentiation. So it's a problem that we should be able to do pretty early on in the year here. So it tells us to consider this curve. Now this curve is not a curve that's explicitly defined for y, so it's probably not going to be a function. We we don't have access to a calculator or any graphing utility on this problem, so we're just going to have to kind of go without being able to reference a graph. Uh, but we've got this relationship between y and x, and the equation is not explicitly solved for y. And what they ask us to do in part A is they ask us to show that the derivative of y with respect to x is equal to this fraction here. So if you try to take a derivative without having the equation solved for y, you make an assumption, and that assumption is that y is a function of x. So when you take the derivative of this term right here, you have a function of x, x, and you have a function of x that's not explicitly known, y squared. So I'm going to have to use a product rule to take the derivative of that, and I'm going to do the derivative of x, I'm going to copy the original second piece of that, product and then the original first piece goes here after the addition and then the derivative of y squared well I'm assuming that y is a function of x so there's an outer function something squared and an inner function y so when I do the derivative of the outer function I get two something to the first the something stays the same inner function which is y and then I multiply by the derivative of the inner function to finish that off I'm going to subtract off of that the derivative of x cubed times y. And once again, since we're assuming that y is a function of x, we're going to have to use a product rule. Now what's going to pretty much make or break your derivative here is this set of grouping symbols. I have to subtract that entire product rule. So when I do the derivative of x cubed, I get 3x squared. When I copy the original second piece, it's just going to be a y. I'm adding on the original first piece, which is x cubed. And then I need to take the derivative of y with respect to x. And the derivative of y with respect to x is dy dx. Don't forget about taking the derivative of the other side of the equation. This one simplifies pretty nicely. A derivative of 6 is 0. And now what we're ready to do is we're ready to try to isolate dy dx. So I kind of cleaned up this left-hand side of the equation a little bit. I didn't really need these grouping symbols that showed where the pieces of my product rule sat, so that simplifies to this. Similarly, I'm, I'm multiplying these four components together. I just kind of wrote the coefficient 2 first, uh, and then the x, the y, and the dy dx. As I rewrote the rest of the left-hand side of this equation, I did distribute this negative into both of those terms. So I get negative 3x squared y and then minus x cubed dy dx and then I still just have a zero on the other side. When you use implicit differentiation like this, your next step is to try to get dy dx terms on one side of the equation and anything without dy dx on the other side. So these are the two terms that contain the dy dx, so I'm going to leave them be. I'm going to add this term to the other side, and I'm going to subtract this term that doesn't contain a dy dx from the other side. Now that I have these two terms present on the left side of the equal sign that both contain a dy dx, I'm going to factor dy dx from them as a common factor. So when I remove dy dx from this term, I'm left with 2xy, and then when I remove dy dx from this term, I'm left with x cubed, and I just have to make sure that sign stays with the x cubed. What does dy dx equal? Well, divide by this set of parentheses, and you have that answer. And this is what we were trying to show that dy dx was equal to. So now we have shown through implicit differentiation that dy dx is equal to this fraction. Part B asks us to find all points on the curve whose x-coordinate is 1, and then write an equation for the tangent line to the curve at each of these points. So if a point is on the curve, that means that the coordinates of that point satisfy this relationship. So I put 1 in place of this x and in place of this x, and I was left with this equation. Now, without a calculator, if you're trying to solve an equation like this, you're probably going to want to go by factoring. And so to solve by factoring, you do need to see 0 on one side of your equation. So I subtracted 6 from the left-hand side. I had a trinomial here. I went ahead and I unfoiled that. And I ended up with two different y values on this curve that have an x-coordinate of 1. So there are two points on the curve that have an x-coordinate of 1. Therefore, we're going to have to come up with two equations of tangent lines uh, in part B here. The first tangent line has to be at the point of tangency 1 for x, 
comma three for y, right? This is the x coordinate, and one of the y's that went with it was three. So to build the equation of a line that goes through this point, the only other thing we have to know is the slope. Now, since it's a tangent line, we need to find the slope of it by using the value of the derivative at the point of tangency. So when you evaluate the derivative, and I just copy and pasted this from part A, right? We computed this derivative uh, a few minutes ago. When I plug 1 and 3 into my derivative and simplify, what I end up with is I end up with a slope of 0. Well, if you have a slope of 0, you're looking at a horizontal line, and a horizontal line has a constant y value, and in this case, the y value is going to constantly be 3. So y is equal to 0x plus 3, y is equal to 3. You could have done point-slope form here, but this is about as nice as you can write the result. And then I also have to consider the x-coordinate of 1 paired with the y-coordinate of negative 2, since that's also a point that's on my graph that has an x of 1. So I, I do the same thing. I need to find my slope. So I put 1 in place of the x's in this derivative. I put negative 2 in place of the y's. You take a, a few seconds to evaluate that. You end up with a slope of 2. A little bit more complex equation this time around, but I went with point slope form y minus the y coordinate of the point of tangency equals the slope that we just found times the quantity x minus the x coordinate from the point of tangency. The final part of this says find the x coordinates of each point on the curve where the tangent line is vertical. So a vertical line has an undefined slope, and since it's a tangent line, we need to know where our derivative is undefined since the derivative determines the slope of a tangent line. So this is, again, the same derivative from part A, and if we're trying to determine when this derivative is undefined, this fraction is going to be undefined when the denominator of it is equal to zero. So what I went ahead and did is I set the denominator of that derivative equal to zero, and I uh, kept the same mentality that we had back in part B. I, I'm going to try to solve this by factoring. There's a common factor of x that I can take out of both of these terms. So when I take out that common factor of x, I'm left with 2y for the first term and then a minus x squared for the second term. I now have a multiplication problem that's equal to 0. So I went ahead and I set each piece of that multiplication problem equal to zero, and I get x equals zero right away. That's kind of nice, but then I get something kind of ugly for this other one. So when I set this equal to zero, I, I couldn't really get an answer. I could solve it for y pretty easily. I, I could add the x squared to the right-hand side. I could divide both sides by two, and I ended up figuring out that y would equal to x squared over two. Anywhere on the curve where that is what y is equal to, it's also going to make the slope of the tangent line undefined since the derivative is undefined. So the question is, all right, well, well it says find the x-coordinate of each point on the curve where the tangent line is vertical. I'm, I'm pretty sure that when x is equal to zero, my tangent line is vertical, but check out what happens when you try to figure out where on the curve x is equal to zero. If you put zero in place of this x and you put zero in place of this x, you don't get a solution for y for that. So that implies that there's not actually a point on the curve with the x-coordinate zero, so that's kind of a sneaky little aspect of this problem. We also need to ask ourselves the same question about x squared over 2. Where on the curve does y equal x squared over 2? So I put x squared over 2 in place of the y's in the equation of the curve. This was kind of ugly. I, I, I simplified it a little bit. I squared this fraction. That gave me x squared over 4. I multiplied x and x to the, excuse me, that gave me x to the 4th over 4. I multiplied x and x to the 4th together to get x to the 5th. And then the denominator of this is a 1. So 1 times 4 after I square that 2 keeps my denominator at 4. And then I did the same thing over here. I multiplied this fraction, x cubed over 1, together with x squared over 2. That would give me x to the fifth over 2. Right-hand side of that equation is still a 6. This is 1 fourth x to the fifth minus 1 half x to the fifth. Well, that's going to give me negative 1 fourth x to the fifth if I combine those like terms. If I try to solve this for x, I multiply the right-hand side by negative 4, giving me negative 24. I then take the fifth root to isolate x, and I have a super nasty x value, uh, but I do get the x value to be returned as 
the fifth root of negative 24. So the one place on the curve where you're going to have a vertical tangent is this crazy looking x value right here.